Okay, so today we're going to get into the render appearance of various materials. So uh, jumping right in, we're going to go from the Manage tab, we're going to go to Materials, and then go up to the Appearance tab here. Um, so we'll use one of the one of the default materials to start out here, and then in the next video we're going to get into creating custom materials. And in this video, I'll, I'll also touch on some of the limitations that. Uh, that these default materials actually have. So using this common brick material, if we go to our appearance, uh, we've got some information about it. We've got our our image that's being used to create create the, this um, this render appearance, and then we show finished, unfinished, is it glossy, matte, that sort of thing. And then we have a relief uh, pattern here. These are called what are called bump maps, and essentially what it is is it is a black and white image. Um, sometimes it's just the image turned black and white. Other times, uh, a little more effort is put into it, and like the grout lines would be entirely white, and then the brick would be entirely black. Um, basically, what this does is the system detects the light spots and the dark spots in the image and uses that to determine uh, depth. So this is what's being used to take a two-dimensional image and make it look like it's a three-dimensional uh, pattern on, in the model. So we can increase the amount of this um, a little bit. So you can see it adds a little bit more depth, a little bit more uh, kind of three-dimensionality to the texture as we drag this up and down. And then we also have a tint option down here where we can tint the, the image a, a little bit of a color so if we add the the gray tint to it it's going to change that quite a bit we can add, adjust it and make it whatever color we really want um, so this is a, a really basic uh, tech, like material that we've got here um, we can change out the the image if we want um, if we change out that image this bump map would no longer work because the odds that our new image and the old image line up perfectly for the grout lines and everything are minimal. But if we want to change the size of this, we can click on this little icon on the side here and go to edit image. And it shows us that this image is three foot four by three foot ten and three quarters is what they've determined this to be based on the size of the image and the sample, the real world sample size uh, that that image shows. But we can, if we expand this down, we can see that we can increase the size of this. So if all of a sudden maybe you want an elongated brick uh, look to it, we could turn off this locked aspect ratio and say, okay, instead of three foot four, maybe we want this to be four foot six. So now it gets a more elongated brick look. The only thing to be careful about that is when we expand the brick, we're also slightly expanding the grout joint in the horizontal direction, so those horizontal grout joints are going to look a little bit larger than what the verticals are. Um, it expands the entire image. But the way that this works is we have an image that's sitting here, and it's going to take that image and then it's just going to copy it next to itself and over and over and over again and then stack it on top of itself over and over again. This works great for stuff like, like this image actually isn't too bad, but there are some images that are going to cause some serious problems when you do that, especially stone. So stone images, there's usually one or two stones that are a slightly different color than the rest. If you don't have a big enough swatch, you're going to see that exact same stone over and over. So let's say this brick right here, actually there's that little white spot right there in that brick that's kind of unique to that brick. You're going to see that spot every four foot six inches on that wall. So if that was a little more obvious, that would that would call itself out quite a bit and you'd all of a sudden see this sort of tiling effect of the image. So having a good seamless image to work with is, is very important. Um, so if we change the size here, we also need to change the size down here. So we need to change this to say four foot six. Whoops, we do not want to change the aspect ratio so we're going to change that back to three foot four and we're going to change this to four foot six there we go so now the grout lines and everything match up again so that's a, a 
a simple material um, as far as working with it and, and manipulating it. If we go to create new material, we're just going to use this as a, as a basic introduction to all the other things that you might encounter. So your default material has at all of the aspects that you might come across. So you've got your information at the top, um, the generic look, so what color is it. This is the image where you would select and place the image that you want for a custom um, material. You can fade that image a little bit and reveal whatever colors behind it a little bit more. You can set how glossy it is. Is it metallic or not uh, for reflections and, and kind of uh, light reflectivity. Um, there's also reflectivity, so how how reflective this thing is. Um, you can come up here, and this isn't showing a lot of reflection, but we can come up here and say, I'm going to change the scene of this to, let's say I want, I want walls. So now I'm starting to see they've got this chair here just to show reflection and, and that sort of thing. So I can kind of drag these up and down to get the reflection to show up a little bit more, a little bit less, maybe it's a little less glossy. Um, I can also set up transparencies. There's also the option to do an image for transparency, so things like, uh, like chain link fencing is a good example for this. If I wanted to do a chain link fence, modeling a chain link fence would be an absolute nightmare to try to model all of the wire and everything that comes with it. But if I find a black and white image of chain link fence, I can put it in here and the black portions of the image will just be eliminated and then the white portions of the image will show up still. So let's say, actually let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab an image. I'm going to use my texture file and let's say we go to metal and let's see thumbnails. So. I've got a mesh pattern here. Actually, let's go with this. There's a chain link fence option here. So I need to adjust the size and scale of this, but let's say we adjust this and instead of a foot, this is going to be, say, four foot. Okay, so you can see this is working a little differently. Let's change this to like a cube. There we go. Okay, so transparency, I'm gonna crank this way up and say it's 100% transparent. Um, and you can see right now, I'm actually, we'll turn the reflectivity off. And I'm going to actually invert this image because I want the opposite of what's showing up there. That way we can see what's going on here. Okay, so right now you can see that I've got this cube and it's actually allowing me to see through where the chain link portion is because the white, it's actually the inverse of what I, what I mentioned before. The white is actually being gotten rid of here. So if I invert it back, now I'm seeing kind of through the other, through the other way. So creating a chain link fence texture um, using stuff like this can be, uh, can be really handy. That way you can create that, that intricate pattern without actually having to model the entire thing. You can do the exact same thing with with cutouts. So if I apply that same aspect here with cutouts and we're going to invert the image. There we go. So the cutouts would be a better ver a better way of going about a chain link fence rather than a transparency option. So if I make this actually like three feet now now you can see now that's looking like an actual chain of cube made of chain link fence there but you can do the same thing with transparency and cutouts uh, if you crank the transparency all the way up um, self illumination so this is if you want your entire thing to actually glow uh, you can insert a, the illuminance the color temperature the color of the light and everything that it, it actually creates the bump map we already touched on, creating your own bump map, and then tint we already touched on as well. So this is kind of how you build up a, a model of, um, of sort of your render appearance. Let's say what you want isn't actually in the default here. If we create a new material, we can come up here to this replaces this asset. 
and open this dialog box under appearance library if I expand this out you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff built in here that is not in the model already so these are already pre-made pre-made material so let's say we want chrome if I double click on it it's gonna bring that chrome texture in here and have all the properties of that um, of that sort of uh, material that are pre-built in so if you cannot find the material you want here I would check this um, asset browser to see if you can find something there uh, I will say that some of the defaults do have some some limitations. If I go to my default, just a default material thing here, and I wanted to create a brick texture. Personally, I'm not going to use the common brick as my template. I'm going to use the default because if I apply a bump map, and let's we'll just use like a standing seam, um, something here. If you remember this common brick. I can drag from 0 to 2. With my default, I have the option of going from negative 1,000 to 1,000. I can really emphasize um, different things a lot. This gives me a lot more control over developing the depth that I want from a bump map here. So I have the option of going to like a 2 if I wanted to, or I can really crank this thing up and get the look that I'm after so most of the time I am not using my default materials um, I'm using I might use it for glass and a couple metallic like a stainless steel or something like that but most of the time I'm using my my default template and using the variability and options that this gives me one other thing that I would recommend when you're creating a new new material right click rename and then when you rename it put a dash in a space in front of whatever you're you're gonna create what that does is it automatically sorts all of the materials that you've created together and at the top of the list so that way you're not scrolling through all of these materials trying to find the one that you created and possibly trying to find okay what did I name that what uh, I, it might be here it might be all the way down here I'm not entirely sure this sorts all of your stuff to the top and it just makes it a lot easier to manage and and figure out where all the stuff that you're using in your project is so that's a brief overview of the uh, material appearance tab uh, in the next video we're gonna create our own custom material we kinda got into that a little bit here but we're gonna actually go through the process of of creating a, a new material